Drafting is one of the most fun and exciting ways to play any card game. Opening boosters and knowing you're limited to a single pick really makes you appreciate every card in the pack. Each week, me and Sam will open four packs of each core DM era set and add a single card from each pack to our collections. We will then build decks and play a best of three with the loser banning one card. The first player to reach 10 wins takes the trophy and is crowned DM Champion. Join us as we return to the game's inception and draft the oldest cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! in this series, Yu-Gi-Oh! Generation Draft. I don't understand. Mm, let's get battle face. I will attack. I will attempt to return it to your hand. Yeah, that's fine. Because that's a trap. Uh... Main phase two. Uh, I'll activate wave motion cannon. Oh, Jesus. The first turn of the clock. But is there a clock at all? Regeki break. Normal summon. All right, fair enough. <sighs> oh! Last week, we managed to take down Sam using our fire beatdown strategy. Unfortunately, that means he did ban Ring of Destruction and Graceful Charity, which does kind of suck. But now we're opening our side set for this week, which is Tournament Pack 7. We get five packs, so let's see if we can't get anything here. Pack number one. DD Warrior is the ultra of the set. It's decent. I don't think Skill Dark's better than it, so I think we're going to take the DD Warrior either way. This card is a mandatory effect, so it's not like DD Warrior Lady where we can choose to get rid of it, but it's still pretty good. Pack number two, Breaker as well. This is looking like a very interesting opening. So Breaker, that'll be our second, is really, really cool. Really, really powerful card. There are some really good commons in here that we're after though. So hopefully we can see some of them. Speaking of the devil, there's Soul Exchange. Soul Exchange is really, really good for the Monarch strategy. We really, really need this card. So hopefully we can get another one. Pack number, th oh, okay. Pack number four is giving us Soul Exchange, Last Will, and Skilled Dark. These are all pretty good cards. Skilled Dark's probably the weakest. We probably wouldn't use this to summon Dark Magician, but just a 1900, 1700 that's a Dark is really good. Soul Exchange is probably the pick here. Last Will is also really, really good. We don't have like a Cyberstein to float into with Last Will. It's still really, really powerful because we could use this to go into like Magical Scientist or we could use this to go into anything like a Sangan or a Witch of the Black Forest or whatever. But I think Soul Exchange is going to be more useful in like a Monarch strategy and it puts Tribute Monsters kind of back on the table. And last pack, oh, there's the Last Will. Okay, so this... Oh, it's a it's a good opening. It's a very good opening. We were hoping that we could pull Scapegoat, and I think there was maybe one other good card in here we were after. But that means that something like a Goat Control deck's probably off the table, but these are still really, really strong pulls. DD Warrior Lady, like we were saying before. Oh, DD Warrior, like we were saying before, really, really fantastic card. Can be really strong removal. Has to go through battle, though, so it's a little bit iffy, but it's still good. Break the Magical Warrior, can pop back row. Obviously, already using this, so now we'll be playing two. Soul Exchange, really, really good in the Monarch deck. We will probably be jamming those if we get any more Monarchs. And then Last Will, again, probably only going to be good in also a Monarch deck. So we might be on Monarchs this week. We'll have to see if we can pull any in the main sets. Speaking of which, let's go open them. Time to open our main sets for the week. Let's see if we can get anything. We're still looking for Grave Keepers and Beast Down stuff. We're still looking for Monarchs. We're still looking for... Uh, Amazon S cards. There's still quite a lot we're looking for. So let's see if we can find any of that in pack number one. Looks like not pack number one. All right, pack number two. Left leg of the Forbidden One. We'll take that. We'll definitely take that. I don't know if we already have this one, but anytime we see an Exodia piece, we're just going to take it just in case. Pack number three. Uh, Pot of Greed is unfortunately Gentleman's Band. Gaia the Fist Knight is funny. So we're going to take that. We're going to take the, the funny Gaia. All right, Metal Raiders. Still some really good cards up here. The Mirror Force, Witch, and Sangan are all really good. Let's see if we can find any of that. Pack number one. Oh, Magician of Faith. That's another really good one. We'll take that as our second. Pack number three. Change of Heart is unfortunately banned. Um, that really sucks. That's such a good card. But I guess we'll take the Robin Goblin here. We probably never use it, but you never know. All right, Magic Ruler. Still some really good spell and trap destruction in here, like Mystical Space Typhoon, Giant True Nade. We have Delinquent Duo. We have a lot of the Recruiters. We have a lot of field spells. There's a lot of stuff in here that we still need. So let's see what we can get. Pack number one. Relinquished. I really want the Gaia power, but I'm not saying no to Relinquished. We're going to take Relinquished. If we ever get to summon that, that will be really funny. All right, pack number two. Let's see what we get. 
Cyber jar. Is that a playset of cyber jar? Maybe we can do empty jar. Hmm. Pack number three. Buster blader. Yeah, sure. I'll take a buster blader. I mean, the rest of this is all really bad, so why not? Pack number three. Gemini elf. Yeah. Take another one. That's what, two Gemini elf now? Yeah, that's cool. All right, Legacy of Darkness. We're still looking for a lot of the warrior stuff from here. So I guess the big one is going to be Marauding Captain. If we can find some Marauding Captains, that'd be great. Pack number one. <laughs> is that the third Yatagarasu? Is that the third? Okay, we'll take it. We'll take we'll take the third Yatagarasu. Sure, why not? Pack number four. Spirit Reaper! He's finally showed up. Okay, we have our first Spirit Reaper after all this time. Thank God. It's such a strong card, and Sam has been using this over us for so long. Now we can actually use it against him. All right, Magician's Force. I think primarily we're just looking for the Anzanes cards. Let's see if we can find any of them. Pack number one. Uh, well, there's an Ultra Rare that we're never going to use, and there is an OK Anzanes card. So I think it's going to be the Anzanes Tiger. Pack number four. Right, Paladin. Paladin is definitely one that we need. So that's now two Paladins. We're getting closer to that deck maybe being a thing. Pack number four. <laughs> what do you what do you do, Mazira Deville? Can we summon that much? Sure, we'll take Mazira Deville. Why not? Pack number three. Second Horus. Okay, okay. We take that. We take that. Alright, last pack of the opening. So far it's been a little bit lackluster. Let's see if we can close on something big. Uh, I mean, King Dragon's fine. Not bad. He's not great. But yeah, we'll take that. And there we have it. That was our opening for the week. Not the strongest week, but we did still get some very high rarity cards. We got another piece of Exodia. We'll see how that works out. An actual playable card, Magician of Faith. Pretty good. We did pull the Relinquished. I don't know if we had to do anything with this. I don't even know if we can summon this yet, but it's funny if we pull a few more. Maybe we can try and make it work. We got, I think, our third Cyber Jar, and I think that's our third Nimble Monga. We pulled a Buster Blader. I don't know if we can really do much with that. We got some more stuff for our fire deck in Dark Fire Soldier, Spirit of Flames, and down here we also got a second copy of Horus, which is pretty good. We've got a Gemini Elf. Again, I don't know if that's ever coming up. We got our third Yatagarasu. I'm not sure how we have a place at that, but we do. We got some more Grave Keepers and Terraforming to help out the Grave Keeper strategy. We got the Spirit Reaper, which is just generically a fantastic card. We got Amazoness Tiger and Amazoness Paladin to try and make the Amazoness deck real. We got our third copy of Compulse. I still don't know if we're going to be doing much with this, really. We got another secret rare in Mazira Deville. I don't think we're ever going to use this, but we have it. We got the third Pitch Black Warwolf in case Beast Down is ever on the table. And then we ended up with King Dragoon, which is okay. I don't know if we ever summon this, though. Yeah, it's a bit of a shaky week, but we are on eight wins and we have been on a bit of a tear. So maybe it's about time we got some bad luck. Let's fire into deck edit and see what we can make. So this is the deck we're bringing to today's game. This is Earth Beatdown. So unfortunately we do only have the one copy of Gaia Power still. This card seems to keep eluding us. Whenever it shows up in a pack there's usually something else there that's a little bit better. But we haven't been able to collect too many of these. But increases the attack for Earth Monsters by 500 points. That's the main important part of this card. So to facilitate it we're playing as many Earth Monsters as possible. Big beaters ideally. So we're on three Insect Knight, two copies of Gemini Elf. These are 1900 beaters. Berserk Gorilla is a 2k beater that in defense destroys itself. Gigantes and the Rock Spirit can both be special summoned by banishing an Earth monster from our graveyard. Obviously, we have a lot of Earth cards. Gigantes 1900 when it's a battle destroys all spell and trap cards on the field. And the Rock Spirit gets 300 attack during our opponent's battle phase. So it's 1700 on our turn and 2000 on theirs. So might be relevant. Just being able to swarm the board with these cards can be really, really powerful. We're on two Gear Freed as an 1800 attacker and two Chiron. Gear Freed has a little bit of incremental synergy with something like Blast with Chain, which will immediately pop it and let us blow up a card. But also it's protected from things like Snatch Steals so that might be relevant. And Chiron can turn all of our spell cards into MST. Then we've on two Breaker because we managed to pull a second one this week, which is really, really strong. We are really, really happy we got that. And two Blindly Loyal Goblin. This is, again, just a really cool card. It's 1800. It's a warrior, which doesn't do too much for our deck. But as long as card may space on the field, control it cannot switch. So again, protected from something like Snatch Steel, if Sam just so happens to have pulled it. So for our spells, we're on Noble Extermination because our spell trap removal still sucks. We're on three copies of Fissure, one Lightning Vortex, and three Smashing Ground. We're playing a ton of removal because we want our big monsters to be able to get to Sam's face. This is just an all-out aggro deck. So we're just playing as much removal as possible to get rid of Sam's monsters so we can just get in at him for big damage. That's a similar reason why we're on Rush Recklessly because this is effectively a soft removal spell that we can use in the damage step. This is especially good if Sam is also on cards that can be used in the damage step because then we can kind of counter his. So for the traps, we're on Trap Hole, two Bottomless, and three Sakuretsu. These are our core removal cards. 
Dust Tornado because it's our best spell trap destruction. Blast with Chain is kind of a catch-all. It's also kind of like Rush Recklessly and like we said we can combine it with Gear Freed or if Sam decides to try and pop our face down blind we can flip it up, equip it to a monster and then pop any of Sam's cards. And then Mirror Wall which again is also kind of like Rush Recklessly where we can use it in the damage step and we can hopefully win a combat with it and turn it into a removal spell. So for the side deck, two Amazonus Paladin. This is in here because it's an earth monster that effectively has 1800 attack, so it's kind of the next best one we got. We're on the anti stool cards, three Regeki Break. Again, this is in here primarily if Sam decides to play any floodgates. We just want to be able to out them. We've got the triple compulsory evacuation device. This is a little bit sussy, but maybe there's a situation where it comes up where it can be really, really good. Typically, we don't want to play this card because it puts a card back in Sam's hand instead of getting rid of it, which doesn't change the advantage at all and just kind of minuses us, but it does really help with tempo. And then we are on three Horn of Heaven, and these are in here specifically if Sam decides to play Monarch. The side set we've just opened has cards like Soul Exchange in it. Because of that, Sam's got double, so there's a chance he's got a whole play set. And that means that the chance of him going Monarch is quite high. Horn of Heaven immediately negates the summon of the monster, so it won't get his effect. And it will destroy the monster, so really, really good card. So this is the deck. We're feeling reasonably okay about it. This is a pretty Unga Bunga deck, and Unga Bunga good because Matt no think good. So let's fire on in and see what Sam's got for us. So last week was quite an interesting one. We had the Horus versus Horus mirror. Obviously with very different kind of shells built around them. I had more of the fire beatdown strategy and you had more of the level core built around it. Yeah. Now, obviously I won last week. Yeah. Which yeah, is did. good, obviously, because I want to be winning. Um, not so good for you <laughs> because... Uh, well, I mean, I guess you did get to ban a couple cards and you did get double side sets. That's something. Yeah, still, still not, still not where we want to be. We never want to be losing under any circumstances. Mm. Um, I've shelved the level deck. It's gone. It's not coming back. <laughs> I, I just can't get it to work for me. Maybe I'm just deck building it wrong. It's an interesting situation that you find yourself in because you've kind of got to pull something out, right? Because I'm only two wins away from getting to that 10, taking the series. So you've got to uh, you've got to pull something out. It'll be interesting to see what that is. As much as I don't want you to, we could see you start bringing out more floodgates. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I personally don't want that, and I assume probably a lot of the viewers don't want that, but, I mean, sometimes you got to do what you got to do, right? Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. So, uh... Shall we, shall we just fire on in? Actually, before we yeah. fire on in, I just want to ask you the same question I ask you every week. How were your pulls? Did you get anything that was crazy? I got... I, I got a card I love. Mm. Okay. Now, it's not... Black Tyranno. <laughs> <laughs> it's not... It's not bad. It is not bad by any means, but it's, it's not a staple. Okay. Okay. But it is a card I love. Okay, well, my pulls, I don't remember getting anything super crazy. I got, like, some okay cards, but nothing that was like, oh, man, this is this is completely nuts. Yeah. Let's uh, let's fire on in and see what we're both on. I think I'm more worried about side set pulls this week. Okay. Because the side set had some nice cards in it. Um... Yes, yes, it did. Ah, uh, yes, I recall now. Obviously, it's been a... A week since we did our pulls, so not fresh in my memory. Two back row pass. Okay. Well, let's get you to use something, shall we? I'm going to summon Breaker. Alright, uh, yeah, you, you can have it. <laughs> yeah, I thought we might. <laughs> and we'll pass on that. This gives you a little insight as to what I might be on, but... It okay. can still go varying different ways. Hmm. This bad boy was in the side set. I don't remember what rarity he was at. Was it, must have been rare common. or higher. Was he common? I don't know if I got yeah. any. Alright, I'm going to... Normal summon Gemini Elf. Okay. Go to battle. I'm going to declare an attack. Okay. We will activate Rush Recklessly. Interesting. I'll take this. We'll pass. I mean, it's a one for one exchange. Yeah, yeah. And I now have That's all I can ask for. Uh, 
Okay, so we just got the Zombiro. Annoying, but you have a playset and they're always in your hand, so I can't do anything about it. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna normal summon Insect Knight. Yeah. I'm gonna banish Gemini Elf and special summon the Rock Spirit. Okay, we'll bottomless that one. Okay. We'll go battle and we will attempt to crash. And we'll pass on that. So we're on some earth deep down? Maybe. And you're clearly on. I mean, I say clearly. It's either yeah. Warrior or Skill Drain. Uh, we're gonna normal summon Gaff. Okay. I'm just gonna, gonna summon there. a defense monster. Yep, pretty much. I'll set and pass. There you go, you can dust it. Alright, oh, MST, okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll hit it with the MST. You can have it. Unfortunately, I, I'm running out of steam. Yeah? Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm never, when you're on that much life points, hitting you directly with Gaff. So. <laughs> Alright, we'll set, and we'll just pass on this. Oh... Okay. Uh, we'll just pass again. <laughs> Alright, let's see if you've got anything you want to do on summon. No? Okay. Why would I? You feel there's nothing. Pass. I know. I don't have to do anything here. I'm completely fine. Okay, so we are on the warrior deck. That's a strange one. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. We drew, we drew Marauding Captain. I was like, aha! The big thing here is you opened double gaff early and that was yeah. actually a rare from the side set so the fact you've pulled oh, it rare. uh which but then you thought it was a combination that means you have a whole play set now uh, oh, i only had one and now i have three yeah the fact as well that i my deck is really good uh if i have the attack advantage which i should have most of the time but not against exactly gaff zombira <laughs> so you, you kind of hard counted me a little bit here but we'll see if we can uh outplay you in the next game we'll just have to hope you don't get quite as lucky in the next one Yeah, okay. Okay, we'll go second again. I still think it's the right decision. We just hope that you don't get quite as lucky and that we get a little bit luckier. Okay. All right. I think I think this is the correct play. I don't want to reveal it. This is the card that I pulled. Right. I love this card. Good old Don Zalug. All right. Well, I'm going to summon Breaker. We'll fire off breaker, pop this. Okay, we will activate that one. Okay. We will drop fissure. Okay. We'll go battle and we will just attack directly for 16. Okay. He's opened breaker both games, that's annoying. Ah, Sam, you don't know the half of it. Set three and pass. That's right, we have a hand this game. Alright, we'll see if you've got the trap hole. No, no, no. I wouldn't even trap hole that anyway. It's protecting a breaker that's got 1600 attack and no effect. Alright, gives you tempo. Yeah, I don't need it. Alright, let's summon out a blindly loyal goblin. Yeah, he's on the air. Okay. See if you've got anything. Well, I mean, yeah, when I summon the rock spirit, it'd be weird if I wasn't on Earth. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Will Blade Knight here? Uh, yeah, that's fine. I'm gonna set one and pass for now. Okay, we'll fire off the Dust Tornado and get rid of this. Okay, I'm quite happy that's gone. Alright, we'll drop the Smashing Ground. Ooh. Okay. We will summon the Insect Knight. We will get in with Blindly Loyal. Not how I thought this was going to go, to be honest. Fair enough. Pass on that.
Oh, blind MST. Yeah, that's fine. You can take that. Okay, there was a sack, so not attacking was still the correct play. That at least makes me feel better. Mm -hmm. Warrior Lady. Warrior Lady pass. Mm. Alright, we'll get battle. I will attack with my Insect Knight. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Well. But even if I do that. Two quick uh, games, though. Two very aggressive, very far. Well, I say that the first game was a lot of passing into an OTK, but this game was very aggressive. Two still very quick games, considering. Yeah. Oh, we'll see if the third one's a blitzer as well. I gotta say as well, I'm still so jealous of your warrior pools. Like I've been trying to build warriors this whole time, and I've just I've got nothing, mate. I guess it's just not coming together at all. <laughs> uh, all right, let's summon Gemini Elf. Okay. Then I'm gonna set two back row pass back. Oh, normal summon Breaker the Magical Warrior. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. No, I think I'm happy if you've got the dust. No, that one. Or the breaker. We'll summon out Insect Knight. Yep. Go battle. We'll get Insect Knight in. Alright, let's see if you've got the rush again. Uh, well, we don't need the rush when we have the Blast of Chain. Okay. Then we'll pass. Okay, we will vortex yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking you might. A double grandmaster, so... Mm, 18 kind of sucks, but it's not the end of the world. Oh, that's a rough draw. Uh, I guess we're going to go for it. We'll summon out Blindly Loyal. Yeah. I'm going to banish Insect Knight to summon out Rock Spirit. Okay. Go battle. Crash. And then we'll get you down to 43. We'll set back row. Pass. Oh! Um, a singular back row just makes me have to rethink entirely how I play this turn. Excellent. It's uh, Solemn Judgment, Mirror Force... Eventual tribute bottomless. Yeah. <laughs> I think we just have to attack, right? I don't think we can just let you sit there with a defense monster. Okay, that's fine. But if you didn't like one back row, how will you deal with two? It was just a snare of like if I summon and attack it, right? Mm. <laughs> I'm like, if it's anything and you draw a monster, I go to my life point just goes too low. Yeah, yeah. That's fair enough. Now the old Zambira weakness here awesome. a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's just a big 2100 defense monster, effectively. Yeah. Okay. Witch beatdown. We've seen this game before. Yeah, normally I'm on the receiver. <laughs> uh, mm. Mm. Ah, this is tricky. I think I need to rip this bandage off at some point. So we'll summon Gearfried. Okay. We'll oh, okay. Into Witch. Yeah, the cog's turning. He's starting to see what the deck <laughs> has been doing. Um, we will get Blade Knight. Okay, okay. We'll go main two, and then I think just to keep you having to kill this with a card from your hand, we'll fissure that away. Okay, we'll summon the Zombira. Now, what is your plan? I think I have to do this either way. I think regardless of what else you're planning. You're yeah, probably going to use... Set to. Oh, okay. I was expecting premature burial, so the fact that's not there is very good for me. We'll go to battle phase. We will declare an attack. Let's see what you got. 
Okay, so no chain, but you could have just turned it off. Main two will set a back crow and pass. Okay, we'll normal summon the Blade Knight that you know we have. Yep. I mean, I've been playing around Sakuretsu a lot, but I, I don't think I can do it for much longer. Okay. I think it's safe to say I would have Sakuretsu there if I had it. <laughs> I would assume so. <laughs> and if you had Blast with Chain, I think you would have done that as well. <laughs> yeah. What I do have is Fissure. As well as the Rock Spirit. Okay. So it's not lethal, even if you take this. I am going to sack it regardless, though, just in case. I I've seen the... The rushes and everything. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm so worried, man. We'll pass on that. Ooh, and if I didn't row. draw a monster like this turn, it could have all been over. Well, here is Liney Loyal Goblin. He does have enough attack points to finish you off. Yeah, it's all game. Oh. This was. So Ooh. I I only. I can't. Man, it feels so bad again. Hmm. I decided to only play two Rush Reckless Leagues. I, I like them, but I didn't want to see them every game. Yeah. I drew both copies all three games. I saw one Sakuretsu that I'm playing a playset of once. Yeah. And I mean, what I needed against Shu was Bottomless and Sakuretsus because I just never had control. Yeah. I think that's the, the thing, right? Like, I was in a similar situation where I had... Uh, a play set of Gigantes in here that I just never drew. And there were so many situations where I was like, a 1900 attacker here outs what Sam has. I've drawn the yeah. 1700 attacker. So now I'm like, well, I've now got a trade with an 18 here. And then this one doesn't have enough damage to finish you off. And it always just felt like really bad. Except, you know, we're, we're running play sets of them. It's just we drew yeah. one and not the other. Like, this deck was supposed to be hyper aggressive. And I drew a lot of monsters that last game. But mm. I drew, like, nothing to protect them. So you just kept trap holes, smashing ground, fissure, and just constantly had tempo. And I could never get it because I could never summon, cast something to deal with your guy, mm. and then be uncontested. You always had a monster to contest mine. Well, I think both of our decks were trying to do a very similar thing. I'd say yours had more monsters that dealt with monsters. I had more just generically kind of big attack guys that don't have restrictions uh but we both wanted to just use a lot of removal get rid of our opponent's stuff that's in the way and just attack yeah. them for big damage we're both playing you know aggro like the most <laughs> uh stereotypical meaning of the word right i want to get rid of your guys hit you directly yeah <laughs> that at the end there i had smashing ground delinquent duo and rush recklessly face down oh <laughs> And I was just there like, I, I would like any of my bottomless trap holes or Sakuretsu armors right here. Mm. <laughs> like, please, just give me actually something. My set card at the end here is Lightning Vortex, so... Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright, do you want to ping me over your deck list? Jesus Christ, you're on triple Exiled Force now. Double, were you on Double DD Warrior Lady before? I don't even remember. Uh, no, th this is what made me go Warriors this week. The Exiled Force... Oh, you got the Didi second Warrior rotor. Lady, Don Zalug, second rotor. Jeez. Yeah, you... Your deck is looking... <sighs> it's a weird one, right? Because you have a lot of cards that also, like, don't do a lot. Like, Gaff was basically a giant defender most of that game. Now, it's a really good out. It's like a removal spell on legs, right, effectively. And Zombira is kind of similar, where again, it can't do any damage. It will kill monsters and try and protect the board state. But in terms of stuff that you're going to summon and it's probably going to stick around and want to attack, it's like Brandmaster, Breaker, uh, then they Blade Knight. Zalug is attacks a little bit low. Uh, the DD Warrior Ladies can stick around, but a lot of the time they're just going to kind of disappear immediately. I mean, I mean Exod Force you beat me to death with before, but uh, usually he's not going to be sticking around. I think... Although they can't really attack, though, like every time I played them, they always they always get a removal spell out of you rather than being a removal spell themselves. Yeah, but that that's what I mean. That's 
that doesn't feel like it's playing into the aggro mentality, right? Because you're playing it expecting a reaction rather than playing it to be the, the dominant force, you know? I'm not, I'm not saying it was wrong or bad or anything. I'm just... It, it feels... Uh, passive, I guess. Especially since they are cards that you can use aggressively, right? Because you can just summon them and swing it. But the way you were playing them specifically, I guess just because of the way the game unfolded, was basically summon them as a defense monster with, in attack mode. Well, every time I summon Zombira, you wouldn't summon monsters. Which would be <laughs> great if I had more monsters to back it up with, and I eventually drew the witch. I mean, to be fair as well, it was only in game one, I think, that I actually had monsters to summon into Zombira, uh, but didn't yeah. want to. <laughs> and you punished me heavily for that with your uh, yeah. Marauding Captain Allied Forces play, which... Jesus. It's one of those things. I remember when I was a kid playing in our tournaments, I played against a guy called Kevin, who I'm sure you remember. Yeah. But I remember I beat him with pretty much doing exactly what you did. I summoned Marauding Captain, summoned out another guy. Then the next turn, I summoned Marauding Captain, summoned out another guy, dropped A-forces and killed him. And then he was basically got really frustrated with me because he was saying that I was on a swarm deck and it was like super cheap and super lame. And I was just sat there like... Yeah, but I won. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I really do like Marauding Captain, obviously. It's one of my favorite cards. I got inspired to play Warriors as a kid because yeah. of your Warrior deck. Just... Marauding Captain, and I think in this format, is nuts. Just being able to summon itself and summon another guy is like, you were just going to summon that other guy anyway. Now I've at least got a body that will eat a fissure or something. And it can protect it from an attack because it forces all attacks on it. Yeah. Obviously, if you have two copies of it, you can do the Marauding Captain loop so that your opponent can't attack anything or any warriors. I forget exactly how Marauding Captain's worded, but either way, really, really strong card, especially, again, if you can get the warrior bonuses up, right? If you can get the allied forces yeah. or the command knight going. I mean, the allied forces are in there. Every, t every time I looked at it and I was like, do I just cut this card? Is it like fluff? And whenever I drew it, it did stuff. I know I only played six traps, man, but it would have been nice to see any of them at any point. Ah, oh, you're on a second breaker. Yep, that's I was, <laughs> that's what I meant when I said, like, you don't know the half of it. I, I pulled the second breaker, which is why I wasn't too surprised to see it every opening hand. But obviously, still, seeing it every game is still a bit nutty. Yeah. Uh, but obviously, it's twice as likely when you got two. Yeah, I've been really trying to get my hands on these Gaia powers um, to try and just make this kind of Earth Beatdown deck work, but unfortunately it's the common Gaia power that's not showing up. we got the two secret rare Gemini Elves, easy peasy, right? But <laughs> those Gaia fair, powers... I'm pretty sure I'm on a play set of Gemini Elves now. Yeah. There are I mean, some secrets a, um, I'm just getting a lot. I want to say it was a common in a side set, but I don't think I got any of the common. I think I've just got the bullet secret, which, you know, you might have done the same. But um, yeah, as you can see, this is pretty much just a generic... Uh, beatdown strategy right the plan was so i had initially thought that because this side set had soul exchange and last will that you might have been on monarchs <laughs> so i wanted to build this deck as kind of it's not exactly a counter to monarchs but it has a lot of outs to big things if you summon them yeah. um, and then in the side deck obviously you can see i've got the triple horn of heaven which we managed to assemble uh which is like also super good into monarchs so I was, I was putting you on Monarchs this week. Obviously, you didn't. Uh, how were your side set pools, by the way? Obviously, you don't have to tell me specifics, but I, I've seen uh, you've I mean, got you got two last See, I've got two last will. will. Yeah. I've got my two gaffs. Mm. Uh, yeah, I, I've got some cards from side sets. Okay. It, Monarchs was on the cards. Mm. But because I... the other big card was Scapegoat from there. So obviously, you don't have to tell me if you got it. But um, that is the big one that's like, ooh, this, is, this could change the, the way that we play. Because Scapegoat can do a lot of things, right? If we pull Thousand Dice Restrict, we can metamorphosis into it. Um, yeah. It's just a good, powerful card to stop yourself from dying. Obviously, there is the, the kind of cheese that used to exist, which was what, a Sura Priest Big Bang Shop. I don't think either of us have shown any signs of doing that, so... Well, you will be getting two bans this week. So, have you got any idea of... Oh, Matt, I've been having two bans for a while, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and this is my ninth win as well, which means I'm only one win away. I'm taking it. Okay. We'll get rid of the Horn of Heaven. Okay, so that puts Monarchs on the table. Uh, I think I'm going to get rid of Breaker. Ooh, yeah, I think that is... I don't, don't cool. like it, but... Horn of Heaven and Breaker the Magical Warrior. I do like those bands. 
I think they are good bands. I think I... If I have any want to play a full Monarch deck, I think I definitely hit Hall of Heaven, especially since I have a playset. Um, yeah. And if I... I, uh, beyond that, it's I think it's literally like Breaker or Fissure. I don't think there is another good option, and even those options are a bit shaky. Yeah. But yeah, I, uh, I agree with the bands. I think they're good bands. But yeah, GG, buddy. GG, bud.